Uyo Uko Kuno Apo Pano Mamu wana kere Mamu wana kere Right, 30 September 2021 and today I'm joined by two guests and these two guests are very, very familiar to everybody who watches this channel. That is Mr. Jason Midzi and Mr. Steve Mutambua. So that is the president of Zimbabwe People's Action Party and the director of communications. How are you, sir? I'm very good, Mr. Gambakwe. Thank you for, very much for inviting us to your channel. Okay, um, Mr. I'm Tabua. very good, Mr. Gambakwe. Uh, um, thank you very much for having us here on uh, this show. Okay, we've got a, a critical issue here that is going to change the direction of politics in Zimbabwe. I want to give a brief background of what has happened so far. And I want to start on 11 May this year. So on 11 May, Chief Zimba summoned Grace Mugabe to appear before his court. And then on 20 May, she didn't appear and he ruled against her. He set a reburial debt for Robert Mugabe of 1 July because he didn't appear and he fined her. And then in early September, the kids of Mugabe, that is um, uh, Bona, Robert, and Bellamy, they went to Chinoy Magistrate Court and they appealed. Then they lost the court case later on in September. And Grace Mugabe also appealed and she lost the court case on 22 September. Then obviously, Chip Zimba died on 13 August. And as we speak right now, the children have appealed the case again at Chinoy Magistrate Court. So they appealed against the ruling of the chief who said that the body of the former president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, must be reburied by the 1st of July. So this order has various uh, traditional and legal and political consequences. So that is what we want to discuss today. And I want to start with the Director of Communications, Mr. Jason Mitz. In your view, what are the issues to do with this case? What are the important issues here? Thank you very much, Mr. Gambakwe. This case is very, very important because it shaped the image of Zimbabwe. It also shaped the politics of Zimbabwe. There are two political parties which you need to to put into play here. We've got ZANU-PF Lacoste and ZANU-PF G40. ZANU-PF, they made very good. The ZANU-PF Lacoste, they made good. ZANU-PF Lacoste, uh, G40, they made very bad. Now, what do I say about this? Uh, Robert Mugabe is just like Joshua Gabuko Nyongolongomo. He's just Leopold Takawira. He's just like uh, Tekere. He's just like uh, um, people like uh, Sifas Musipa and uh, uh, Mr. Muzenda, the former vice president. Such people, they shaped the liberation of Zimbabwe. You cannot bury such a person in a field of maize or tomatoes. Mugabe already dug his grave at the National Heroes Acre, at the National Shrine. He's the one who masterminded the building of that National Shrine. So why do you go and build in him in a field of tomatoes in Zimba? That is unacceptable. That is politically wrong. Why was it done? There are two critical issues here, Mr. Gambagwe. A... Mugabe's first wife was called Sali Mugabe. She is a national hero. She was buried at the Zimbabwe Heroes Acre. Now we have a second wife called Grace Mugabe, who is bitter, who is jealous, who wants to lie next to her husband, who knows that uh, 
she is not a national hero and she will never be buried at the national hero's acre. So she is jealous. She doesn't want Mugabe to lie next to Salim Mugabe at the national hero's acre. She wants Mugabe to lie next to her in a field of tomatoes or in a field of, of maize in Zimba. That's why she said she had to push and to connive with the G4 who did not have the ethos and the ethics of the liberation or of the war of liberation. To say Mugabe should be buried in Zimba using Muzukuru Leo Mugabe. Huh? Who, who, who by today does not know his surname? Who has not fought to, foul, to find his surname? Huh? To bury an, a, a liberation icon in a field of tomatoes. That is unacceptable. They shamed the people of Zimbabwe because Mugabe. Uh, branded the people of Zimbabwe wherever you go around the world. When you say I'm from Zimbabwe, they don't know where you are from. When you say I'm from Mugabe's country, they now say, yes, we know where you are, you are from. Because of his dictatorship, yes, it was bad. But people know us with Mugabe. And you cannot uh, bury such a person in a field of tomatoes or a field of maize. That's unacceptable. Mugabe is supposed to be buried at the National Hero Seca. He used a lot of money, public funds, to build the National Heroes Acre. So he is supposed to be, built, to, to be buried there because he built his grave already. People like Mbuya Nwaka, okay. they are there. Uh, our right. <clears throat> Mr. Mizi, you raise an important point that Mugabe cannot naturally be buried where he's buried now. And the court case is there. If this is not theoretical. The court case is there. The ruling by Chief Zimba is there and it stands. Now I want to go to Mr. Mtambua. The appeal by the children has, is it the one that has stopped the rebuilding of Mugabe or the other factors at play? Okay. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Gambaku. I think um, yeah, um, yeah, this is a, a political issue, but uh, looking at it, um, I think when um, uh, the children uh, appealed at, um, at uh, the Chinoy um, court, um, and also a point of correction there, um, I think the, the, the chief who died is not Chief Zimba, it's Chief Bepere, whose jurisdiction is uh, where uh, uh, Mugabe's homestead is. But uh, Chief uh, Beper, I think um, he avoided to, to, to hear the case and he gave it to Chief Zimba. So the, the one who died is Chief Beper um, on that one. And um, I think um, on the issue of uh, appealing, I think uh, the, the kids, uh, they want their um, father uh, to, to, to lie where he is uh, right now. They don't want uh, the exhumation um, from Gabi's body to be buried at the uh, National Shrine. So I think, um, and the debt, uh, which was um, um, uh, which was put uh, aside by, the, by Chief Jimba, the 1st of um, July, that one, I think uh, now we are in, uh, in September. Um, I, 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 I don't know if they are going to, 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 to appeal uh, this case, uh, because that one is a lower, a lower um, court, uh, the court in Chinoy. Uh, there is um, a higher court um, here in Harare with the Supreme Court. So I think uh, we are waiting to hear if uh, this case will be um, brought to, um, to Supreme Court. Okay, I, I want to, to go back to a very important point that you raised. The children do not want Mugabe to be buried at the National Heroes Acre. And Mr. Mitz had said Mugabe cannot naturally be buried where he's buried now. How do we resolve that conflict? Who is got supremacy, the kids or the national the national interest? Yeah, uh, on, on that issue, sorry, Mr. Mitz, on that issue, I think um, 
uh, ZANPF, uh, they've got their own ethos and uh, principles that uh, a liberation hero or a heroine has to be buried at the national shrine. So Mugabe being, uh, you know, the uh, the founders of um, uh, the, the, the party, the revolution party, ZANPF, he was supposed to be buried at the national shrine. Because Mugabe, look at uh, what he did to uh, Edgar Teker. He forced his wife for uh, Edgar Teker to be buried at the national shrine against Edgar Teker's uh, uh, will. And also the same happened to um, Sifas, uh, Sifas Musipa. Uh, Mugabe uh, had an upper hand on the barrier of those um, um, uh, heroes. Okay, Mr. Mitz, I want to give you a chance, but on a, a different angle, slightly. Let's look at the ruling. I, I want to give you details about the ruling. The ruling says, Chief Chidziva is to lead the reburial process. So that's number one. Number two, Grace Mugabe must pay the fines. She was given a fine. Then she must pay the costs, the reburial costs, and the, the costs associated with anything to do with this reburial. Then it says the Chinoy Magistrates Court must go and collect Mugabe's belongings from wherever they are. So the messenger of court, the Chinoy Magistrates Court. Then it says the national authorities. So the people with permission must exhume and rebury Mugabe's body by 1 July. This ruling is far and wide reaching. You know, it, it's got so much that it, it has ordered other courts, it has ordered national uh, bodies, it has ordered fines on Mugabe. Is this ruling valid? This ruling is very, very valid. The children of Mugabe, Belamaini, Chatunga, Tatenta, and Ibona have no stake in Mugabe. What they stole and what they are eating is enough. What has remained should come to back to the nation of Zimbabwe. Now, let's come to your question, Mr. Gambakwe. The ruling is very valid. It has taken long because... Zimbabwe as a nation was ashamed when all the presidents of Africa gathered in the National Sports Stadium and they were hearing all this rubbish G40 politics and uh, uh, young Mugabe wife politics that Mugabe should not be buried at the National Sports, at the National Hero Seca. They shamed us enough and I think it's a high time grace and her G40 colleagues pay for the shame they put on the country. Because uh, it's the same ZANPF which went to Mozambique to exhume the bodies at Chimoyo, the bodies in Yazonia. Why should Mugabe's body not be exhumed? It should be okay. and be buried. It, it's a key question. It, it's a key question. Mugabe's body the court order is there. So it's not theoretical. And I agree with you that according to that court order, there must be an exhumation and a burial. I want to give you a follow-up question. Who should do this process? Can it be done without grace? Can it be done with, without Leo? By far, it should not be done without grace. It should be done even with one without grace, one without Leo, if they don't like the reason being, Mugabe is a national icon. Bad or good, he's a national icon. Two, he used the public funds to build the national shrine. If they don't want to be involved, they should pay back to the nation the amount that was used to build that national shrine. Three, national image. I think the government, the current government, if this was the Zimbabwe People's Action Party government, we were going to set the record straight what belongs to the state belongs to the state. What is in the uh, values, the founding values of the nation should stay in the founding values of the nation. There are many people who were forced to be buried at the national hero seeker by Robert Mugabe himself. Uh, he, chickens have come back to roost. He should be forced to 
we buried at the National Heroes Acre. Now, for, for the nation, if we talk about national interest, then, uh, yes, he was buried, Robert Mugabe, here and there. He was also good in some areas, but he should be buried at the grave that he dug the National Heroes Acre because that's where he belongs. That's a national issue. Uh, these G40 elements and Grace Mugabe, uh, with their jealous for their own whatever faction of Zanpia Lacoste, which beat them in politics, they sought to damage the image of Zimbabwe when presidents of the whole of Africa gathered at the National uh, uh, Sports Stadium without knowing, with no knowledge of where Mugabe was going, going to be buried. And also with a lot of, uh, you know, stories flying around that Mugabe is going to be buried in a field of tomatoes in Zimpa and all that stuff. And they were spreading rubbish information that uh, Mugabe's body parts were going to be used for ritual purpose. Yes, we know. Mm -hmm. Zanu PF have gone to some place to, to you know, to do rituals for for diesel. Uh, the times of Chinamasa, we all know that that's a ritual, or whatever. But ritual or no ritual, a country is not run on ritual purposes. A country is run on police purposes. The police is uh, this national hero seeka was built for the uh, liberation heroes to be buried there and Mugabe is the mastermind of that should be buried there like or no like those kids of him should go and hang okay I'm gonna come back to you our money. they should retain our money that was used to build that national hero seeker they should also take Ngomo's body and go and bury it in Bulawayo take his body go and bury more than Mahachi and many others and go and bury them back to their countries, not to play with with us, the people of Zimbabwe. We cannot be played with. Okay. I, I hear you, and I want to go to Mr. Mtambua. And I, I want to now look at the stakeholders. And I want to start at the top. What is the role of President Mnangagwa going forward? I'm not talking about in, in bringing up this this charges or against grace i'm talking about going forward the, the court case was heard the judgment by the chief stands what role is the president going to play in the exhumation and reburial is he going to play a part or this is going to be done by the chinoi people and is it just going to be a manual process or a political process mr Mtambo? okay thank you very much uh, mr gambaba I think uh, as it is right now, you know, the, uh, the court um, uh, ruling is there. Um, the, the part, uh, Zankiev, like what they, uh, they used to do when they were exhuming the, uh, uh, the dead heroes from uh, Mozambique and uh, other uh, places uh, in Zimbabwe, I think uh, there is um, a department which is responsible for that? Um, I think it's the minister of uh, minister of um, uh, home affairs. I think I think that one uh, museums and national monuments. Yes, yes, and that one that one I think they will uh, take over uh, uh, the the exhibition. And um, I think it, it, obvious it's, it's, it's a NPF thing, but there's a department which is responsible to do that, and I don't think. Uh, uh, Mr. Munangagwa will be at the forefront, you know, uh, doing the uh, exit mission. I think um, uh, as it is now, uh, the, the court papers will be given to the responsible uh, authority or depart department which does uh, uh, those things. So I think from here, I think uh, uh, as, as, as you have said that uh, I think before December, uh, everything will be, will be done. Okay, what's stopping everything? Because the order was given to Chinoy Magistrate Court. The message of court was told by the chief to go and remove Keto from uh, Kushingo Darius. The, the message of court was told to go and remove Mugabe's clothes. The message of court was told to, to take certain actions. They haven't done it. 
Chief Chidziwa was ordered to do certain things. They haven't done it. And that department was told to exhume and rebear him. God. They haven't done it. What is stopping everything now? Uh, Mr. Gambakwe, what's stopping everything is lack of direction. And uh, I can call it uh, the ZAN PF, the current ZAN PF government is conflicted. They are conflicted in the sense that uh, this is a G40 issue. Mugabe died the G40 and they are Lacoste. And they believe in these superstitions and all these, uh, you know, religious issues. But what the government should do is to lead the process and ensure that a hero's burial is done for Robert Mugabe. Just simple like that. They have to put the record straight. They don't have to go behind the scenes and try to choke the courts and choke the chief of Zimba or what. The government should have a police in place and uh, execute their mandate. Also, uh, the ethos of the founding values of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe was found on the background of the war of liberation, like it or not. So this man, because he was one of the masterminds of that war of liberation, and is the one who used the public funds to build the National Hero Seca, should be taken quickly and go and be buried at the National Hero Seca, and we do we get done with this case. So it's now the issue of President Munangagwa to come straight in people's eyes and say, we are doing this. Set the, the record straight so that tomorrow there are no such funnies and wasting of uh, media time and public funds and all that stuff. People's funds is very important. Public funds should be, uh, should be used appropriately. Okay. I, I think the points are made. Let's go back to Mr. Mtambua. Any last words? You, you are from this province. Is there anything else that you know about this case that may not be known in the public domain? Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gambab. I think um, um, this, uh, this whole uh, issue is uh, political. Um, there they is... Uh, nothing like uh, traditional or whatever. Uh, I think the um, uh, Mugabe family was uh, very bitter. And even, uh, uh, I was reading that, someone said uh, Mugabe died. He, he, he was no longer his NPF member. He, uh, he, he was his NPF member, but he, uh, from outside, because he was now bitter, uh, the way how the uh, 2017 uh, scenario happened, I think, uh, that that way, um, it forced him to go and vote for other party, which is not ZANPF. I think that one is uh, uh, is known that uh, before uh, a day before the the election, he, he called for a, a press conference where he declared that he's going he's not going to vote for for his party ZANPF. So I think um, all this uh, issue is is political. And uh, is what, like what uh, Mr. Mids uh, said about the uh, the barrier of Salim Gabe, the Eros Eka, uh, Grace knows very well that she is not going to be buried there. So I think um, she wanted uh, her husband to be buried at uh, at uh, at their Shimba homestead, uh, so that uh, he can have that uh, title, you know, uh, to be entitled that you know I buried my husband at our home state, and where we refused to bury him at the National Shrine. Okay. So let's go to the next steps. If the, the kids lose the appeal, and I'm directing this to, to Mr. Mids, should we expect to see a national funeral like you're suggesting, or a technical the reburial process like Mr. Mutambua is suggesting. What is the best? I want to give you the last word. The best, Mr. Gambakwe, is a national funeral. Mugabe was not... Sorry, I'm mute, sir. Okay, you want me to come? Yeah, you can go ahead. Yes, the best is a national funeral with 
all the national, the way it's done that we people gather at the National Hero Seca and gun salutes are done and the hero is buried. The hero was shamed by a jealous wife called Grace Mugabe who did not want the husband to be buried next to Amai Guru Sali Mugabe. She knows, Grace, that she would never be buried at that shrine because she's not a national hero, point number one. Point number two, G40 wanted to score a political issue using uh, Mugabe's death and burial. They wanted to shame the Lacoste that had beaten them politically in their Zanupia faction fighting, which affected the image of uh, Zimbabwe internationally. So definitely, definitely, a hero's burial is what is supposed to be done, and Mr. Mnangagwa should, in all fairness and in the wake or in the face of national interest, should lead the process and set the record straight. The same Mugabe forced the burial of Brigadier Gunda, people like uh, Elliot Manika, Boda Gezi, they all went to the National Heroes, uh, whatever. So they cannot today cheapen the value of the National Heroes Acre, which was built using public funds. And when Mugabe is buried in a field of tomatoes, it cheapens the value of the hero seeker and its intended purpose, which was masterminded by Mugabe himself. So in the national interest, they have no stake. No one, those Mugres and their children can go and sleep in their field of tomatoes. They have no interest and they have no stake in a national icon's burial or a funeral. They need to relax, keep quiet. And it is the money that Mugabe stole from our country, the billions, or return them if they are tired of eating that money anyway. Thank you. Okay. I, I think that was a, a, a very strong conclusion and controversial also because <laughs> some people were saying in our culture, if, if you drag Mugabe's body out of his grave, you might end up with some uh, cultural replications. Uh, Mr. M Mr. Mtambua, I think le let's bring this issue to a rest because obviously it's continuing. I'll bring you back again when, when there's a new development. I, I, I want now to go to your party, the Zimbabwe People's Action Party. You, you are contesting as the presidential candidate. Can you give us a, a, an idea of where you are? What are you preparing for? And what's your view on where we are now politically in Zimbabwe? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gambaka. Um, I think in Zimbabwe, we were used to two political parties, uh, ZANPF and MDC. And uh, these two parties were you know, fighting in uh, urban and rural areas. So we have decided to come in as a third force so that we can dilute the you know all this rhetoric politics which we are seeing um, day and night uh zimbabwe people's action party is a, a pan-africanist party um its members are in uh, in the country zimbabwe and uh in the diaspora and uh at the moment we are we've got uh, some uh, strong structures uh across the, the country in all provinces and uh, we are prepared, we are geared up to contest in the 2023 election. Um, we are going to field all MPs in all constituencies. Okay, did Zek invite you to today's consultative meetings that we're holding? Okay, yeah, yeah on... on uh... Yeah, I think Director of Communications can go ahead. Uh, Zeg did not uh, invite us. Uh, they invited uh, their choir, the Pollard choir. <laughs> so they will invite us in future. Why, why, why were you not invited? Because we are a true uh, opposition political party. Because we are a threat to ZANPF power. Because at Zeg, the uh, CIOs and 
you know, those who represent the current regime. So why would they invite people who want to change the country for the better of Zimbabweans? They wouldn't. So we'll fight our way in. I think Mr. Mtambua will be at their offices by tomorrow to knock and tell them they should invite us or come by force and enter those offices and, uh, you know, represent the people of Zimbabwe. Okay, Mr. Mtambua, let, let's go to, to your agenda for 2023. The issues between MDC and ZANU-PF, they, they are not, to a, to a large extent, especially the MDC, they are not bread and butter issues, they are power issues. How do you differentiate yourself from the MDC? Okay, um, thank you very much there. Um, in Zimbabwe People's Action Party, I think the first thing we did uh, is to read our constitution. We, we know it very uh, inside out. You know, uh, the moment you, you know your constitution, uh, you will you not uh, uh, hear things like um, uh, factionalism, going to courts, uh, this and that. We don't want to waste our time and energy uh, attending court cases. What we want is to hit the ground. We want to campaign uh, freely uh, without, you know, um, uh, you know, heckling about who is the leader, who is uh, this and that. Well, the, you know, um, the, the services are, are dying. You know, uh, look at um, Arari. Uh, I stay in... Um, uh, Arare West constituency. Um, you know, you you wonder if there is an, an MP uh, who represents us here. But we, we in 2018 we voted for those people to to you know to develop the constituents. So in Zimbabwe People's Action Party, uh, our politics is politics of development. It's politics of uh, servantship politics of uh, meritocracy you know we reward people uh according to their effort according to how they work we don't uh, you know appoint people uh on partisan uh issues you know tribalism this and that you know our party is um a, is is for everyone it's for every zimbabwe so we want to change the landscape of um, uh zimbabwean politics and then I think uh, you will see when uh, uh, they uh, call for uh, the beginning of um, uh, for campaigning, uh, we have got a different strategy altogether, which is different from uh, uh, these uh, other political parties. Okay, I, I think this has been an interesting discussion. And Mr. Mitz, when I bring you here, you, you always manage to to capture the attention of a lot of people. And I, I feel like we need to bring this to an end so that we don't dilute this topic with the Mgabi issues we're discussing. So let, let me give Mr. Mtambua a last word. Is there anything else you want to say before we close? Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm calling for uh, uh, Zimbabwean people to come and uh, join Zimbabwe People's Action Party. You know, try us. We are... A, a, a new party with a different, you know, um, ideas, uh, our principles, our ethos. Uh, you know, uh, people are fed up with, uh, you know, this type of politics of, um, uh, you know, social media politics of calling each other names. Zimbabwe People's Action Party, yeah, we don't uh, talk about any political party. Because the moment we talk about a political party, we are marketing them. So we are putting our effort on the Zimbabwe Action Party, uh, building our structures across the, the country, across the world, uh, in the diaspora, and uh, in Zimbabwe. OK, Mr. Midzi, any last words? My last words is that uh, Zimbabwe People's Action Party believes in constitutionalism. It's constitutionalism which will hold us together. We are not held together by 
tribal affiliation, church affiliation, or religious affiliation, or regional affiliation. We are held together by the constitution of the party and of the country. So all the people who want Zimbabwe to progress should come and join and support the Zimbabwe People's Action Party. And forget about the people who are fighting, because when parents are fighting, there is no development that will come. Kids who get nothing in that family. And uh, look at Zimbabweans. We are getting nothing from Zimbabwe because MDC and ZPF have been fighting for the past 20 years, from 1999 up to today. And they are continuing to fight, you know. So we, can, we don't eat fights. We want to eat good service delivery. We want good education, uh, good salaries, and other good things. But we can't get them when we are led by parties with whom we voted and we voted them to go and fight one another. That's immature politics. Mature politics is in the tummies of the people. When our people have good salaries and are happy and have, are all having good food and everything, then that's what we call politics. It happens in Britain, it happens in Australia, New Zealand, America, Canada, South Africa. When people have food in their tummies, that's good politics. Not when we have names which we talk about every day when people are poor. That's nothing in, in politics. Thank you, Mr. Gambab. Okay, Mr. Midzi, Mr. Mtambo, I really enjoyed talking to you today, especially the, the very strong opinions that, that Mr. Midzi is bringing on this issue of the reburial of Mugabe and the approach that Mr. Mtambo is taking on this issue on a cultural and, and more legal route. I, I want to see which route is going to, to succeed here. Because this issue, the, the fact that there's a court ruling, it makes it difficult for authorities to do nothing because it means they would have disobeyed a court order. So let, let's see what happens uh, with the cases which are between before the courts now, the, the kids appeal. And then we'll be back again to discuss this issue. We've been talking about this since Mugabe died in September 2019. It's almost two years, right? It's just after two years since Mugabe died. So I think let me bring you back when we, we have more information. The next time there's movement in this case. Thank you very much, Mr. Mtambo, and thank you very much, Mr. Mitz. Thank, thank you, you very, very much, much. Mr. Mbaku. Ayah, 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 ayah